talking about my brothers and me. We don't have a pedigree, but we're brothers. brothers. We might follow different dreams. We might play on different teams. Where it counts behind the scenes, we're brothers. Life is full of stress and strife. You lose a lover and leave a wife. A brother's a brother. Hey, everyone. Hey, Daddy. Hi, Hello. Sam. We just wanted to say goodbye before we wing our way to... Hold on to your underalls, kids. Dollywood. <laughs> Dollywood. You mean Dolly Parton's Tennessee Retreat, an anatomically correct amusement park? <laughs> you know, I hear everything about that place is... big. <laughs> well, Sam was born there. Funny, Sam, I never noticed a southern accent. But then again, your body does have an overall drawl. At least my body has something to say. And it's usually yes. Now, 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 girls. Kelly, are you sure you can handle the restaurant? If you can remember what you promised. No, Kelly, you cannot hire male cage dancers. So much for giving the people what they want. Two weeks paid vacation? You do a good job, you got it. Come on, let's go, Joe. It's Dollywood or bust. <laughs> well, if anyone needs me, you know where I'll be. In the arms of the great red menace. <laughs> All right. From now on, we run a tight ship around here. When I say jump, I want to hear how high. Kelly, you forget. We don't work for you. I know, I know. I'm just warming up. <laughs> the hostess from hell. <laughs> you are 12 minutes late, Buster. No one is indispensable around here. You just remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cliff, what's wrong? Did someone call you a heterosexual? <laughs> no, no, Donald, the weirdest thing happened. I was in class at the culinary school. I was uh, demonstrating my beef and pastry a la Cliff. And when I uncovered the finished product, I heard a distant barking. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> and then there was a rumbling at the door. It burst open, and a pack of mad dogs attacked my filet. <laughs> they must have been wild dogs starving. No, nah, they were all trailing leashes. One crazed poodle was trailing old Mrs. Needlebaum. You know, she does a nice belly slide for an elderly librarian. <laughs> me to believe this excuse for being late. Oh, yeah? Watch this. I saved some beef by stuffing it in my lab partner's trout. <laughs> Cliff, what are you doing? No, no, just watch this. <laughs> See? My God, it sounds like festival seating at a Julio Iglesias concert. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! But there's a pack of dogs out there carrying torches and pitchforks. Torches and pitchforks? I added that, but he made a better story. There. You believe me now? Those dogs just ate my homework. <laughs> you know, if I could go to culinary school full time, I wouldn't have these problems. I could concentrate on my work instead of worrying where the money was coming from. So why do you bag this canine masterpiece and make a killing in the dog food market? Please, Penny, I am a chef. I do not make dog food. I believe them critters outside would sit up and beg to differ. I mean, imagine me in the dog food market. <laughs> the dog food market. That's what I like about you, Cliff. You're a man with integrity. Above all else, integrity. Always integrity. I believe they're ready for the check.
Gentlemen, start your engine. Donald, what are you doing here? I'm in the annual Velvet Spike car rally and scavenger hunt. Now, here's the things I still need. An ostrich egg, a hockey puck, an old TV guide with Tina Louise on the cover, pom-poms, the worst photo of Jack Lord I can find, and a harpoon. And I know you have all these things. I do, but now's not the time. Oh, oh. I see. Expecting company, are we? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Well, let me just find what I need for the hunt and then make myself scarce. Yeah, why don't you just make yourself scarce? Ooh, live one, eh? <laughs> well, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> girl and see what we've won. <laughs> You're right, Cliff. If we're gonna make a killing in the dog food market, we gotta act fast. Penny, <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> what are you doing here? You sent a cab for me. Well, Cliff takes the low road. Donald, I merely asked Penny the hypothetical question how, theoretically, would dog food make us a million bucks? Actually, you said a million five. Integrity. Always integrity. Donald, I just want to make enough money so I can go to culinary school full time. Is that such a crime? Of course not. Well, fine. If you want to go to the dogs, it's your puppy. Now, where's the TV guy with Tina Louise? In my bedroom. In the display case. So, what do you got for me? Okay. Well, the way I see it, here's the big picture. Well, it's as big as I can make it. Hoochie pot pies. It sings. It sings? It barks! Now, I figure there are at least 50 million dogs in the United States alone. So, figure 50 million times 75 cents please, a can. Please, please, at least two dollars. I use nothing but the finest ingredients. I love it. Snob appeal with a capital B! Now, I say we flood the market with samples, stand back and let the dollars fly. Great. Which part of the country do we conquer first? You leave that to the sales force. <laughs> Cliff, before I go, I only have one thing to say. Donald, Penny and I are on the edge of a dream. You got something to say? Talk fast. Cliff, when I was a younger man... <laughs> ...with little income, forced to buy clothes off the rack... I made a foolish choice, much like the one you're making now. Is this as fast as it gets? Yes, it is. Now, I'm not very proud of myself, but once I let my values take a hike and I wrote a... a gay gothic novel. Well, did it sell? Did it sell? They camped out in sleeping bags for the first edition of The Bitch Wore Red. <laughs> Donald, how come we never heard about that? Because my pen name was Viola Lesseur. <laughs> but the point is, you sell out, you lose sight of everything that's important. You forget your family and friends while you chase the almighty dollar. Donald, that would never happen to us. Of course not. We'd never turn our backs on our friends. Penny, have you ever thought of a toll-free number? 